Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. And it's Jordan Drake here. What better place than Wetzlar, Germany at Lights Park to do one of our classic, the good and the bad of, of course, in this case, Leica. Yeah, this is our ongoing series. We've looked at a bunch of other camera companies, but while we're here, this seemed like the perfect opportunity. Yep. So who's good cop, who's bad cop? Well, you know, this time you get to be schlecht Polizei. I don't speak uh, German. And I get to be gut Polizei. So you Googled something. What does that mean? I'm good cop, you're bad cop. Let's start with a good topic. Something that Leica does unquestionably well is give the user a unique shooting experience. You know, on our trip here in Germany, we've been shooting our, our video about the most expensive camera ever yeah. sold, and I've been shooting an analog M6. I've been loving it, you know, just the classic rangefinder experience, no LCD pack panel, no chipping my photos, and it's just this experience where there's so little between me and the photo, and I really love that. Yeah, but I mean, let's get the elephant out of the room when we're talking about Leica out of the way, which is if you want that very unique experience, it is very expensive. It is, but honestly, if you think about the M-series rangefinders, nobody else is giving you that experience. I mean, right. there's a couple boutique manufacturers trying it. I'm surprised more people don't. And the Leica Q, there's not really anything like that now that Sony's right. dropped their RX-1R line. So it's a unique experience, Jordan. Yeah, I think that's what Leica has to focus on. Because when they have that, like I, I love the M series, I love the Q because no one else is doing it. But it's when they bring out cameras that feel very similar to other ones, that's where I don't know if it's worth the premium. Like the Leica CL felt like a lot of APS-C mirrorless sure. cameras. The Leica SL2, I love that camera, but honestly, it's not a hugely different experience than using an S1R or a Panasonic S1. Such a downer. The M series is by far the camera series Leica is best known for. And if there's one camera system out there that would hugely benefit from in-body image stabilization, it's that one, but they still don't offer it. Okay, I mean, granted, that would be an excellent thing to have, but you gotta remember that, you know, Leica's dealing with limited space inside the body. I mean, the M11, they're really trying to lighten it to make it, uh, you know, more compact like the classic film versions were. They put the bigger battery in there. I mean, fitting an SD card, even the engineers were saying, was quite difficult. So, you know, at least we have a memory card. That's quite important. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the diagrams of it and there is no room in there with its current technology. Mm -hmm. What I would love to see is like, let's move to a stacked sensor that can read out very quickly pull the mechanical shutter out of these cameras and maybe that would give us enough room for in-body image stabilization. Yeah. I mean, that would be very exciting. But then you wouldn't have the click. Jordan, people need the click. You can't have a Leica M camera without okay. the click. If you put a thousand dollar speaker in the back of the camera, so it's a digital click, but it just sounds perfect. I'd maybe they can pull it, but then that would take up more space in the camera. Oh. One thing that Leica does that we love is they use DNG as the raw format. Any company that gives us DNG really always gets brownie points with us. So by that metric, then Pentax and Sigma have huge brownie points from us as well. In that regard, yes, Jordan. Regard. Can you imagine if they didn't do that? Oh boy. No, it's a fantastic thing. I mean, we love being able to open up our RAW files anytime, especially on, on, on press trips. You know, many different softwares can open up. You can preview it on any platform. So I think it's a great move. A DNG file is so widely accepted, it's almost going to be like a format with an indefinite lifespan, as opposed to proprietary RAW formats, which could just not be supported at some point. Yeah, so you can't say anything bad about it. Leica is pretty ubiquitous with manual focus, but they've got a lot of autofocus cameras and well, the single autofocus performance is very good. Continuous autofocus is still pretty dodgy. I mean, I don't know what you want to do. It's, it's pretty hard to defend that position. <laughs> yes, I mean, it is. Yeah, the continuous autofocus needs work. But on an optimistic note, let's keep in mind that now with this latest L2 partnership, where there's going to be this more free exchange of technology and, and design and information between Leica and Panasonic, yes. Panasonic has said in the future they're open to phase detect autofocus and hopefully that'll pay dividends. But for right now, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the continuous autofocus, it can give you sharp images, but it does still have that kind of wobble when you're focusing. And it's just not an enjoyable shooting experience. And as we already touched on, Leica is about the enjoyable shooting experience. So Leica do a lot with a very simple interface. I mean, the three buttons on the back I find actually very intuitive to use, but most importantly, I love that they do a separate interface for video and stills. I mean, between the two of us, I'm the only one who's actually shot a lot of video with the Leica cameras, and I have nothing to complain about here. Yeah, I love this. We're always saying like, this is the ideal format, and there's other manufacturers who are keeping some of the settings the same, right. going between stills and video, but just having a totally separate interface, you know, having shutter angle. Really the only other camera doing something similar I can think of is the Canon R5C, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a dedicated cinema camera. So I applaud this Leica, keep going in this direction. There you go, but, uh, so I win, but you're supposed to be schlecht Polizei. 
Now Leica is really known for some of their legendary lenses, but I wish that they were a bit more ambitious when it comes to the L mount. But Jordan, I mean, you're talking about, you know, Leica, legendary optical manufacturer, minimal compromises in their lenses. I mean, the L mount stuff that we've used from Leica has been fantastic. Yeah, it's extremely sharp, no question. But I really feel like in the L mount, everyone has a specialty. You know, Panasonic are doing these great video optimized lenses. Sigma's doing some really great well-rounded budget sure, options. But you I just want like crazy attention grabbing stuff. For, like where is the L mount knocked? You know, I want something like that. Or in the case of like the Q2, they have this perfectly engineered lens where it's autofocus, but it has brilliant manual focus clutch that feels like an actual manual helicoid. Sure. I want something like that in L mount as but well. You, Give you, me a different experience. You just said That's it earlier though. On. You just said it earlier though. You have the option to go to Sigma. You have the option to go to Panasonic. You do have a lot of other lens options. So if they're making L mount options, make them be something that I can get really excited about. I think one of Leica's best strengths, one of the most positive things about them is actually their willingness to innovate, but also to take risks and go down different directions and see what happens. Exhibit A for me is a modern camera that I actually personally really loved, and that's the TL series. The TL, the TL2, totally different design, but gorgeous. Uh, it looked sharp and cold, but it handled beautifully, and that touchscreen interface was incredibly bold. Being able to customize it, set up the panels you want. I mean, I really enjoyed using that camera, and it could have been a disaster. Yeah, I mean, it was certainly not a huge success on the market though even though it was definitely them taking some risks. Exhibit B the M11 right I mean for me when they changed to the larger battery and removed the base plate I know that pissed off a lot of purists but I think it was the right choice it was bold it was risky but in the end it made in my opinion the best handling M digital camera to date. This could be a real problem if you're not familiar with Leica products but it's something that certainly Leica devotees have learned to deal with uh, there is a long wait anytime you're looking for any piece of equipment from Leica. We saw it firsthand back when we worked at a camera store and people would come in and be like, I would like a 35 millimeter F1.4 Sumalux. And we would be like, you know what? It's gonna be about 18 months to two years before that arrives, sure. but you're gonna enjoy it once it does show up. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I mean, some of those wait times were very, very long, but I would still argue that from a business standpoint, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, yeah. you always have demand when you keep that supply low, but also we gotta remember the reason why they do it is not because they don't want higher production, but because making things by hand, you know, keeping up to the design parameters they've set for themselves and just being that demanding, that's why these things take a long time to produce. Yeah, I mean, on their side, it's great because you never hear about Leica having a fire sale because they've got a warehouse. Right. They always know how many orders they have coming on for anything at any given time. But yeah, it does make it really hard when I, like I do every other week, impulsively want to buy myself a Q2 monochrome. And then it's like, well, you know what? I'd have to wait two years anyway, so I'll hold off <laughs> for another week. And I guess I'm never going to buy a Q2 monochrome. <laughs> that then. just provides down the year a very robust and exciting used market that people complain. Jordan, these are all win-wins. I just want a Q2 monochrome. Okay, so that about wraps it up, but I think we should still address that one issue that is, of course, people, they just love in the comments to complain about how expensive Leica cameras are and, you know, they're only for certain people and that kind of thing. And I mean, I get it. I absolutely get the argument, but I think it has to be understood that like a lot of handcrafted things, watches, cars, you know, anything craftsman-like, they have their niche, they have their market. That's just what it is. Yeah, it's funny. We don't see the same kind of huge pushback with those because they're seen as luxury goods, which, and the nice thing is a lot of these cameras, they're not just collector's items, but yeah. like we touched on before, you, where are you gonna go for a cheap, affordable, full-frame digital rangefinder? I mean, they're the only <laughs> ones making it, so they can charge whatever they want for it. And let's be honest too, I mean, like we talked about already, if you wanna have the Leica experience, it doesn't mean you have to go buy the exact latest and greatest camera at the highest price. There's so many options in the market, lots of different choices, and there's lots of people who are enjoying the shooting experience of using a Leica, and you're not having to plunk down your entire bank account. Yeah, exactly, and if the price scares you, then maybe a Leica is just not the best choice for you and you don't have to leave an angry comment about how much you hate Leica right? and they're just tools for dentists they're and things like that. I'm being the bad cop and I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> Anyways, Jordan's walked off, he's so angry, but as always, thank you guys so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Do leave those comments below, absolutely. And until next time, we'll see you again soon for another episode of Deeper View TV.